All right, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about our upcoming nor'easter once again that's going to be coming up for today, tomorrow, and even a little bit of Friday. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, right now, we're looking at our current hazards, our current uh, watches, warnings, and advisories. And you can see that in some of those brown colors along the coast, so we have a tan color there. That's a wind advisory. And then we actually have a high wind watch there for the coast of Maine. And some of those Cape Cods, Nantucket, uh, and also Martha's Vineyard, we do have, again, some of those high wind watches. Obviously, those are a little bit more intense than the wind advisories. So those are the areas we're expecting the most intense winds. But I have reason to believe that even Boston could be involved with some of the heaviest winds. So again, st stay tuned throughout this video. We're going to talk more about total wind future cast radar, things like that. Also, you notice there's a green area just on the outskirts of New York City there in New Jersey. That's going to be your flash flood watches. So we're expecting heavy rainfall for those regions and the potential for flooding. I think there, you know, there must be something specifically about that area that makes them very susceptible to flooding. Let me know if you guys are in that area, if it is, if it does flood a lot there, but there's got to be a reason why that area has that and not a lot of the surrounding areas. Anyway, let's get into your future cast radar. This is a this is actually a program called WSV3 for those of you that are curious. I get a lot of people asking about that. So this is going to be our precipitation type future cast and you can see up there on the top left it says model and then the date and then the time. So this is for 9 a.m. Uh, today. So this is just about now. You can see we have some Pretty heavy rain going on there for the western regions of Pennsylvania, eastern regions of Ohio, and then a lot of the mid-Atlantic as well. And that's just going to be heading further and further northeast into New England. So right now you can see we have nothing going on as far as radar up there. But as we move on to 3 p.m. today, you can see that a lot of those heavier showers get a lot closer to New England and upstate New York, as well as the western New York, New York regions like Syracuse, uh, Cuba, and then Erie, Pennsylvania as well. Uh, have some of those heavier showers already arrived, indicated by the yellow. And then some of those oranges are even heavier. So for New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania alike, we do have some of those heavier showers going on within our rain bands. Let's move on to 8 p.m. And you can see the very heavy rain. Uh, we're seeing our nor'easter rapidly intensify by this time. This is a bomb cyclone, or that's what we'd call it last year. I think that was a popular term. We're seeing bombogenesis, which is just how fast the, the pressure is dropping in a certain amount of time to be considered bombogenesis. And we are seeing that happen potentially with this nor'easter, so I'll probably put that in the title. But we really have a lot of heavy rain there for New York City, New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, and a lot of New York State, as well as Connecticut, Long Island, Rhode Island, and western Massachusetts by this point. We're all getting into a lot of those yellows and even oranges, which is indicating the even heavier areas of rain once again. By 12 a.m. tonight, you can see some of those reds showing up and, again, still rapidly intensifying with this bombogenesis going on. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Long Island, Nantucket, uh, as well as Martha's Vineyard and Cape Cod, we're all receiving very, very heavy rainfall. But even Albany is getting some of those oranges by this point. So a lot of areas inland are also being heavily, heavily affected by this one. Also notice a little bit of white going on there for New or West Virginia. You should be able to see that on the bottom of your screen right now. That's where we're seeing some snow start to mix in for that area. We're also going to talk about our expected snowfall towards the end of this video, so stay tuned for that as well. Now, I zoomed in a little bit as we're getting closer to 3 a.m. Our All of our precipitation is specifically for New England by this point, but in between Connecticut and Rhode Island, you see very, very heavy rainfall, 50 dBZ plus according to this model. So we're seeing that very, very heavy banding there for a lot of these areas, as well as uh, Boston and eastern Massachusetts by this point, getting a lot of the oranges, but still western New England as well, getting some of those oranges at times. And it's very, very windy by this point in a lot of eastern New England. We're going to talk about your wind gusts as well using this same product. Now you can see by 8 a.m. tomorrow, we even have some of those blues showing up for a lot of the Adirondack Mountains up there in upstate New York and even a little bit of the southern green mountains there in Vermont. If you look at our snow 
uh, bar up there at the top, you can see that blue indicates 30 dBZ plus snow or 70 dBZ rain, but it's not, it's not rain, it's snow. We're seeing snow mix in, very, very heavy snow. 30 dBZ plus is what we consider extremely heavy snow. Uh, and that's what we're possibly going to be dealing with tomorrow morning time in the Adirondacks in very high elevation areas as well as areas in Vermont as well. So we'll be on the lookout for very, very heavy but brief mixing with snow. Uh, and we're going to talk about our snowfall total as well soon. Here's by 12 p.m. and you can see it's growing. We're getting colder and colder as the low pressure system is moving east of the area and the cold is allowed to move in. And it's probably being lake enhanced by this point as well, leading to even higher uh, rates of snow, but we see that all even surrounding areas that are a little bit lower elevation by this point have switched over to rain being indicated by those whites and blues once again in New York. So it's a lot more widespread by 12 p.m. tomorrow, as well as areas in, uh, I think they're called the Berkshires in Massachusetts and then the Southern Green Mountains there in Vermont, as well as areas near Keene, New Hampshire, starting to mix in some of the mountainous regions to your northeast. And by 6 p.m., we still have that snow mixed in, but really we're starting to see a lot of lighter precipitation by this point. And the precipitation is weakening. Up north of Montreal, we also have some snowfall going on. Not that anybody really lives there, but <laughs> we do have snowfall going on up there, I thought I'd mention. And by 6 a.m. the next day, you can see it's really just flurries and little sprinkles going on by this point in the lighter, lighter greens and, and whites. So we're really seeing it really simmer down by the 18th. So later on the day, Friday, it's really going to be pretty much done for the most part. Now, here's a look at our wind that we're expecting according to the NAM model as well. Uh, you can see our bar at the top. The lighter blues there is 10 to 20 mile per hour gusts, so not a big deal. Green is where it starts to get a bit gusty, 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts. That's when it's, you know, noticeable. And then the orange is 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts, and you can see it's pretty widespread right now. A lot of the areas receiving gusts that are, you know, in excess of 30 to 40 miles per hour. And then reds is 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts. 50 to 60 mile per hour gust in the pink, 60 to 70 mile per hour gust in the purple. So you can see not a lot of areas in the mainland receiving anything over 50 miles per hour, really, with the exception of some very high elevation areas. But for Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Cape Cod, some areas in Long Island and Rhode Island alike, we are seeing some of those heavier gusts. And not, not anything you guys aren't used to there in very coastal New England with these nor'easters, but it is very extreme, and it's the most extreme nor'easter we've seen so far this year, at least. Again, in those purples, which is kind of looks like it's uh, touching some areas in Rhode Island and Martha's Vineyard, uh, we're seeing 60 to 70 mile per hour gusts. So very, very interesting, widespread, heavy gusts. Now, I zoomed in even more locally to eastern Massachusetts here, and this is by 3 a.m. on, this is 3 a.m. tonight. And you can see a lot of those purples and blues showing up, indicating 60 to 80 mile per hour gusts there for some areas in Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and Cape Cod, and very, very coastal regions there. Um, and I think we called it the South Shore that's in between Boston and Cape Cod. So I'm learning and learning more about geography here. But new, near New Bedford, uh, uh, what's that, Northeast and East, Eastham, Eastham, something like that, Provincetown, all of these areas are receiving this heavy, heavy wind. I've been there, I should know, but it's a beautiful area. Um, now by 4 a.m., you can see Boston getting the brunt of these winds. 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts on this model for downtown Boston <whistles> and Rockport as well, Provincetown, Plymouth. All of these areas are receiving very, very heavy wind. And in those yellows, we're receiving 80 mile per hour gusts plus. So... Very, very crazy stuff going on. Um, just unbelievable winds. And this could be leading to a lot of damaging winds. I got a comment the other day that said their local news was saying this could bring a lot of the fall foliage down. And they were wondering if I agree with this wind that we're expecting. I would say, yes, I probably do agree with this. Now, by 7 a.m., you can see it's moved on to coastal Maine. A lot of those islands, like Bar Harbor, areas like that, we're receiving anywhere from 50 in those pink colors. That's 50 mile per hour winds to 60 mile per hour winds in the purple, and then 70 mile per hour gusts um, in the blue. Again, I keep saying winds on accident, but all of this is gusts, not sustained winds. That's really important to note. The gusts. I feel are more important to show because that's how you know that's how heavy we're expecting the gust to get. 
But then again, it's not going to just be constant. So that's the good news. Now let's move on to some of your snowfall. For New England, this is our snow depth by the time it's all said and done. Again, this is using the same scale that I use on my maps that I make. So in the white, we're looking at a dusting to three inches of snow. You can see there is some areas where it's a little bit translucent. That's where we're expecting more of a dusting. And then actually in the white is where we're expecting pretty decent accumulations approaching one inches plus. So one to three inches in the solid white there. So some areas in the Adirondacks and some areas in southern Vermont as well, as well as the White Mountains getting some of those solid whites. That's indicating, again, one to three inches of snow. And then in your light blues, that's where we're expecting just about three inches of snow for some very, very high elevation mountains in New York and a little bit of southern Vermont maybe. But that's where we saw the heaviest snow. Now, also Vermont... Or sorry, also West Virginia. I don't even know how I got that mixed up. But West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, you can see, and even North Carolina and Tennessee, Virginia, all of these little bits of very high elevation areas are receiving just little bits of maybe dustings. Maybe, I would say at least you see some snowflakes in some of these very high elevation areas. But West Virginia, just to the east of Elkins, some of those mountain ranges might be receiving up to one inches, maybe even approaching uh, three inches. So we might even see some decent accumulation there. Now here's your maximum expected wind gusts according to NOAA. So you can see it's a little bit more conservative, but we are expecting 50 mile per hour gusts to be possible along the coasts of Maine, Southern Massachusetts, all of Rhode Island basically, and then a lot of areas in New Jersey and Delaware as well. That's where we're expecting, uh, yeah, I would say about 46 to, to 53 mile per hour winds. And then when it starts to turn gold, like it does for the coasts of Maine and then also Cape Cod, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, that's where we're expecting 55 to 60 mile per hour gusts to be possible for a lot of those regions. The reds, that's more like 35 to 40, 45 miles per hour, and then purples is 20 to 30 miles per hour, and anything that's more blue than that is 20 miles per hour or less expected gusts. Also, here's your expected rainfall for this storm. You can see two inches plus in that red coloring, uh, and, and this is actually precipitation, so this is snowfall and rainfall. Uh, any precipitation that falls. And then when it starts to turn yellow, like it does for some of those regions in Vermont and uh, New York, it's actually four inches plus. Anyway, guys, I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. If you have any friends that are going to be expect expected to be impacted by the storm, any friends or family, be sure to share it to their social medias or your social media so they can see on Facebook, Twitter, what be it, anything. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.